Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex, and today we're going to make brass. Now, brass comes from zinc ingots and copper ingots. So what I want to do here, you know, as I did up here in an effort to separate the ingots from the casting so that I can combine ingots later, um, I'm going to build particularly for the copper ingots, I'm going to build a process that will yield more copper ingots than I need right now for brass, just because I don't want to have to build more a second time. Um, and I've set this up. This is the highest tier process I can do right now. Um, we take processed copper, turn that into copper pellets. Uh, copper pellets get turned into copper anodes and then the anodes get turned into the ingots. So it's a few more steps, but um, I think it'll be okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double the quantities of these machines I have going up to the copper ingots. Okay, so we'll start with two Mark II ore processing machines. And I will try to, one, two, three, four. We'll try to line those up like so. And those are going to be making processed copper, obviously. Yeah, we'll get power there. That's fine. And a light. Now these might take a fast inserter. Yeah, we'll need a fast inserter on the input for these guys. All right. So let's get some copper ore brought over there, which we can draw from here. And it'll be nice to start using this copper. All right, filter, let's see, smelting copper ore. Okay, um, yeah, and I'm just gonna turn north right here. see yeah I think I want to be above these two belts so I will jump over again and I'm full okay let's get rid of some stuff here all right let's do that that way we can come out there and not have to make a mess. There we go. All right, so now we're making those. All right, now those have to go into two pellet press, mark one, in order to make copper pellets. And inputs on these can be yellow inserters. Okay, and then the copper pellets will turn into anodes with blast furnaces. So we need two blast furnaces. Okay, I've got those right here. So we'll do those like that. And we'll make copper anodes. And these will also require oxygen gas, which we currently don't have, but we'll get to that. All right, and a yellow inserter coming out of these. Will be sufficient as well. Okay, so far so good. Uh, and then from there, it's going to go to three chemical furnace Mark IIs. 
one, two, three, and thank goodness I left myself room. Uh, we also need to feed these blast furnaces. I think I'll just use the carbon for that. these up and we'll pick up from those belts okay so now we just need the oxygen and we'll take care of the we'll take care of the fluids once we get the rest of this done all right copper ingots these will need acid and on the input it looks like they're gonna need Fast inserters, each one. So we can do that. And I think that will leave us the ability to bring in some acid. Let's do... Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move one of these. Let's see. All right, well, first of all, let's put that one there. Yeah, that inserter is in the way. Hmm. All right, what if we do the acid on the other side? I think that would be better. Because the inserters on this side are only going to go into... into a silo. Although in this case, if I use a warehouse, I think it'll be better. So I'm going to use a warehouse for these. Let's see. Outputs. Yeah. So one fast inserter on each. So this one I'll just have to change the drop point. I think that'll make it. And then that one can go there, and then we'll just hook into that input point instead. Okay, and then we need some power there and some power there. Okay. And then um, I did put a limiter here, as you can see, just because, you know, there might be, there might be more efficient ways to make aluminum. Let's see. Yeah, we've got, this is the process we're doing now. Sodium hydroxide, processed aluminum. Okay, well, I was just thinking that I don't want to convert all my ore into ingots all at once because maybe there's a better process to be used, but I think we're already at the best, the most efficient process for that right now. In fact, let's just check FNEI and see what it has to say about it. Yeah, it looks like there's only one process to make the ingots, and that's from Illumina. Okay, there are other ways to... Okay, well, I'm going to leave it limited. That's fine. And we'll do the same here. I'm just going to limit it to... the top three rows for now. 
That's a heck of a lot of copper ingots. Okay, so now we need oxygen. Uh, let me actually set up a different, another production block. And in this case, I'm just going to do the copper ingots from anodes. And we'll set this up for three Mark II furnaces, which is what we've got here. Okay, two blast furnaces, we've got that. Two pellet presses, we have that. Two Mark II ore processors, we have that. Okay, so that's all set. So let's see what we need for oxygen if we make it from the air. All right, one chemical plant and two air filters will give us enough oxygen for this. Now I think we're gonna need oxygen for steel as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the oxygen over here so that we have room to expand it later if necessary. And let's start, I really should be putting in some dividers in these areas too. So let's, uh, let's start doing that just to try to keep things a little bit better organized. Okay. Whoops, I turned off my thing here. Yeah, I want that and pin it. There we go. All right, so I need to make another air filter. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> All right. I'm going to want some of that stone brick. <laughs> Getting tired of running back to the base every five minutes. Okay. So let's just go one, two, and then... And that way we've got room for a couple more if we need them. And we can also go up to Mark II's later on if necessary. In fact, if I had more brick, I could do that right now. Nah, that's okay. This is fine for now. All right, and then I need one chemical plant, which I think I've already made. Yeah. Here we go. And that is going to make nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, and then uh, the nitrogen I'm going to flare. And then the oxygen will send over here. And if, did I? Oh, man. You know, um, there's that expression, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Oh, no. <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right, well, we're so close. Let's just move this one tile. So close. All right, one, two, there we go. Okay, and these need to make compressed air. What else can they make? Alien spores. Hmm, okay, I don't think I want those. All right, and let's make that brass just so everything matches up. Got inserters there. Okay. I'm going to have to move that power pole. Actually, let's just do it like this, and that way we can just use straight pipe here in the middle. There. All right, so we just need to 
power this up. So I'll do that by just bringing that there. And then that. Okay. Let's move it. There we go. Okay. Um, I think I should put the oxygen in a tank, actually. And it should be on this side. All right, I'm going to have to move this again. Let me get another blueprint. Okay, so I'm not going to have as much room to expand this as I originally intended, but that's okay. All right. Um, yeah, let's use... Should I use a big tank? Well, if I put that there, there's still not enough room. I'll move the flare stack. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, let's move the flare stack. I want at least, I need two spaces for this pipe and a one-way valve. There we go. Oh my God. And then I need a pump. Am I out of pumps? I think I'm out of pumps and I don't have any engines on me either. All right, where are the pumps? Yep, I need an engine. Let's see if I can make one here. Iron pipe. What do I need? Two pipes, one gear, and one steel plate. There we go. So I'm not going to move this yet. All right. Now the pump. There we go. It's going to go right here. Like that. Thank God for the bots. Okay, and then the flare stack we'll put right there. Okay, that was kind of a pain. But we've got the oxygen now. And this is making anodes. All right, uh, and then we have more oxygen here for whenever we need it. Actually, I don't see anything going into the pipe. There we go. Okay, 96 and 96. Okay, there we go. Um, 
Okay. So now we just need to get some acid up here. Um, so I was chatting with some of you on Discord, and the decision was made to use barrels for our fluid handling needs in this playthrough. Um, when you're using logistics train network, I think that managing barrels will be much less of a pain. Um, and also, so that's one reason why I want to do that. And the other reason is just that I've used fluid tankers in every other series that I've done. I've never really done much with barrels except for lubricant. Um, so I want to challenge myself to use barrels this time. So the idea to manage the barrels will be that I'll produce some in the main base. I'll put them out in the network where they're needed. And the place where they're going to go in the network is, I think is going to be at the train depot. Uh, and the reason for that is that all of the trains go back to the depot after they drop something off. So my thinking is that when the trains drop off barrels full of whatever fluid we're using, we can load the empties at the same time. And then when they go back to the depot, the empties will get emptied at the depot and we can set up a provider station at the depot for the barrels. So that's the, uh, that's the plan for that. All right, so let me get some cargo bots. I'm gonna use bots to... No, I don't need to use bots. We can do belts. I'm gonna to try to use belts as much as possible. I'm put those bots back. All right, so first, but first we need to set up the production of barrels. And I'm just trying to, I mean, I, I'm guessing we're going to need a couple thousand of them at least. Uh oh, we need to get some acid over here. So I guess it's good that we're doing this now. Um, and we'll get the acid from here in the main base, uh, which is where, at least for now, we'll get it from here in the main base. Where am I making acid? Okay, uh, I put a symbol on the map somewhere, didn't I? Here we go. <laughs> All right, yeah, we've got two tanks full. So making barrels down here would be a good idea too because then we can load them into one of these stations. In fact, we could probably use this station as a provider for barrels as well as the carbon. So let's do that. That means we're going to need to run a belt over there. A belt of steel. Yeah, so we can just take it off the bus and run it next to these pipes. That seems like a good idea. Um, I'm going to shut this down for now. Okay, here is the steel. Uh, I better use red belts for this. Well, no. Yellow belt's fine because uh, we don't have... We don't have a red belt's worth of steel anyway. Thank you. All right. And hopefully this will be enough belt to get there. Well, it might not be. A hundred. I think we're almost halfway there. Okay. Get right here. Okay. 
Okay, and I think that is just a regular assembly machine. Actually, let's bring it down on this side instead. We'll use this side for the output. Okay, and we want empty barrels. One steel plate each. And one second each. A little bit less than one second each. Alright, so I think a yellow inserter on the input will be fine since we've got a stack size bonus. And we'll just do two of these. Okay. And a large power pole there and there. Whoops. Alright, so that means we can use one of each on the outputs. Um, let's see, one, two. Alright, so we'll bring them over like that. And then let's make this go on the near side. There we go. And I'm going to have to go back for belts. Let's get the car for that. I've also been asking for opinions on what to do about biters. And I think that, I mean, there were opinions on both sides of the issue, but I think the general consensus is just to go ahead and nuke the biters with a console command. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that after this episode. Um, for those of you who want to see some combat, um, I am sorry about that. I uh, hope you're not too terribly disappointed. Um, but to be quite frank, um, you wouldn't be seeing much combat anyway, because I don't think I would be killing biters on camera in this series anyway. So you're not going to miss much. All right, so let's put the input limit on here. And we're going to change this to... Empty barrels. I think 5,000 is probably a good target to start with. Actually, let's do it like this. Okay. I'll put those in there. Okay, good. All right, and then sulfuric acid, I think we'll bring up here as well. Since this is our, since this is our provider station. For now, I think um, I think eventually we'll have a dedicated area to making these things. All right, so yeah, in this case, I can just take some out of this pump. We'll need a barreling pump, and I think just one of these will probably be enough. Okay. Yep, like this. Uh, 
sulfuric. Fill sulfuric acid barrel. That's what we want. Okay, so now we just need to bring in some barrels. Which we can do here. One, two, all right. Just put a splitter. What's the cycle time on this? 0.2. Okay. Um, yeah, so to go full speed, well, I'll just put a stack inserter. Um, we're not likely to have, I mean, since it's only a yellow belt, I think one stack inserter can empty a yellow belt. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it can. All right, and then we'll do we'll do two stack inserters out, and I'll make one of them short. Okay. All right, and we'll need to limit that as well. Okay, so this is going to be. Sulfuric acid barrel. There we go. And we'll put in 5,000 of those. What if we can put productivity modules on that? Okay, so we now have some sulfuric acid available. I think we're gonna wanna change the provider threshold though because by default you need a thousand of something before it acts as a provider and uh, it'll take a long time before I have a thousand acid barrels. Well, Actually, does it count the barrels or does it count the fluid in the barrels? Because the barrels have 250 acid, I think. Let's see. 50. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm just going to leave it and then if if we request some acid and there's less than a thousand barrels and we don't get any, then we know the reason why. All right, so I'm just gonna bring my train over here and then we'll go and set up a receiver for the sulfuric acid barrels. And then hopefully we can start making copper ingots at least today. I'm still trying to get used to the slower pace of this playthrough compared to the last one. You know, I think I said we were going to make brass today and now, and you know, <laughs> we're not even, we're not even ready with copper ingots yet. So I probably need to be a little less ambitious. Okay. And uh, we're filled up with stone again. So we're going to have to start doing something with all that stone and those other byproducts. Okay. Is that filtered? Yes, it is. All right. So let's set a request for sulfuric acid. Yeah, I think it's going to count barrels. Let's ask for 100. Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, so we're going to have to set the request threshold to, I don't know, 10. How many am I asking for here? 100. All right, so let's set the request threshold to 50. All 
Unfortunately, that's going to affect the carbon too. And that, I suppose, is a disadvantage to using mixed stations. Okay, and it didn't make, it didn't schedule any delivery for the acid, at least not yet. Uh, I don't like this because this is going to, let's use this other one instead. Otherwise it's going to be, it's going to be pulling in a train with carbon like every five minutes. Actually, every five minutes wouldn't be bad. It'll be less than that. All right, so let's call this smelting acid. Okay, let's power this up, and we'll use this one for the acid. Um, yeah, and actually, I need to I need to reconfigure this as a receiving station rather than a providing station. So let me just get rid of all that. I'll leave the station since I've already named it. And let's copy this. Except for that. Okay, and I need to make a constant combinator. There we go. Nope. Oh, crud. All right, well, I'll put it in there <laughs> after it arrives. Okay, so here we are going to request the sulfuric acid barrels. Jeez. Yeah, I have to search for it. There's no way I can pick it out of the lineup there. Sulfuric acid barrels. And we'll request a hundred. Um, yeah, and actually, this is going, we're going to have to return empty barrels as well. So I'm going to have to make some changes here. All right, so we're going to re set the request threshold for half of that quantity. I think we're going to have to wait for the carbon to be delivered here before it'll send another train since we did limit it to one train at a time. All right. And then this needs to be sulfuric acid barrels coming out. But do I want to send the barrels or do I want to just unbarrel it here and send the fluid from this station? Because then I'm going to need a return line for the barrels. I guess I'll, I guess I'll send the barrels. Okay. And then this will be... Actually, I want the return line to come over here on this side. Since these are set up to balance from right to left. Hurry up. No station supplying sulfuric acid barrel found. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have to set the limit. All right, but first let's let's uh, let's get the rest of this set up. All right, so the, yeah, so the acid itself we can bring out here. And then the return can come over here. Okay, and I'm going to need another barreling pump. I think it's the same. I think it's the same pump to unbarrel. It is as it is to barrel.
Okay, we've got our well here. I think we can jump over it. Yep, just barely. Okay. All right, so this is where the, I'll remove that for now. This is where the acid needs to come in. All right, let's get our barreling pump. And I'll put it right there. Rotate that. There we go. Okay. And this is gonna be empty sulfuric acid barrel. Okay. So there's the empty barrel, and this is the full barrel. So we'll have one in, one out, and that should keep everybody happy. All right, so now I think we just have to set our provider threshold for those barrels back at the main base. Now again, um, if I set the provider threshold there, it's going to set it for the carbon as well. But I don't, I don't see having a low provider threshold as as much of a problem as having a big request threshold because theoretically, since the provider thresholds default to a thousand everywhere, even if I have a request threshold set at one or zero it still won't request it until it reaches the requester threshold. All right, so yeah, we've got almost 500 barrels here. So let's set our provide threshold. Yeah, we'll just set it to one. Okay. So requested some acid barrels. Um, and then we need to we need to set the receiving station to put the empty barrels back on the network and i think i can just do that with some filter inserters set for empty barrels so that when the train stops there, they will automatically go in. Okay, so there they go. That's good. Uh, looks like it's going for another round. All right, here's filter stack inserters, and we're gonna set these for empty barrels. Okay, so let's see what happens when those barrels get over there. Okay. And we're off to the races. I think we might want stack inserters here. Okay. Excellent. Okay, and we're making copper ingots, as promised. All right, and then um, I just wanna make sure this gets handled properly, and then I'll have to go to the train depot and set up the handling for the empty barrels back there. Okay. Um, yeah, and these will eventually be balanced. Now let's see. I'm going to hop in this train. Okay. Yeah, so empty barrels. Oh, okay. 
All right, these are going to have to be filter inserters as well. All right, um, but they need to be set to only empty the the filled barrels. Everything except the empties. So how could we do that? If I read train contents, I think we can pull the signal from here. Because this is going to tell us what the expected inventory is. All right, let me use a red wire there. All right, yeah, that red wire is not going to interfere with any of the other ones. All right, and we'll use, we'll set that to set filters. And then I think when the train is stopped, it should set that to sulfuric acid barrels. No, it's set on empty barrels too. Why is that? Let's see. Okay. Um, all right, I've got another idea. All right, scratch that. Let's use one of our arithmetic combinators. We'll set this to minus one. All right, so whatever we're requesting, I'm gonna multiply that by negative one. Uh, no, that's not gonna work either because if I request more than one type of acid, these only have one filter slot. <coughs> All right, where else am I setting the filter on emptying? Over here, right? Yeah, here we're setting the filter on emptying. So I've got a green wire from there. And it's going to the output, which is negative. So. Maybe I just need to do this with a green wire instead of a red one. Maybe that'll make it work. Let me get rid of these. All right, so green wire from there. I don't want to go on that pole though. We need to keep this green wire separate from this other green wire. Set filters. All right, let's try this again. All right, it's not working. Well, I'm out of time. I'm going to have to work on this after, and uh, hopefully I'll get it fixed and explain to you how I did it when I'm finished. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.